Thank you to Kenneth Copeland Ministries for sowing the airtime for this broadcast. There's enough power in every sick room and in every hospital room to raise up that sick one that may be describing you. Yes, you yes. may be in a sick room. Yep. You may be in a hospital room. And I want to remind you, power is present. That power is there to do a work. Believe in what's present, not try to get something, but notice that he's already made it yours. It's present right where you're at. Say, I receive that power. I receive that power. I receive it right now. I receive it right now. From the top of my head. From the top of my to head. the soles of my feet. The soles of my feet. Welcome. We're so glad you're joining us today for Jesus the Healer. We are so thrilled with the Word, and we have been having a good time ministering in this series on wisdom, yes. the wisdom of God. Amen. On previous episodes, we talked about the wisdom of God that will promote you out of tests and trials. Yes. To come out of tests and trials, hear what He would say to you. Yes. That's yes. the Amen. wisdom of God. Right. Hear His Word, what His Word would say to you. Hear what He may say to you by His Spirit. Yes. To, to uh, Listen, God knows your answer. Yes. That's right. That's right. And he wants you to know your answer. Yes. So we were talking about cooperating with God and receiving the wisdom that promotes you out of tests and trials. So we invite you, go back and watch previous episodes in this series. But on this last episode we did, we started talking uh, about the wisdom of God, but from the standpoint of who we are in Christ. Yes. Because for the new, Christ, the new creature in Christ, the Christian, the wisdom of God is who we are in Christ, yes. who he has right. made us to be because yes. we belong to him, That's because right. we're part of the body of Christ. Amen. We've been using as our golden text, Proverbs chapter four and verse six, and this is the Amplified Classic translation. It says, forsake not wisdom and she will keep, defend and protect you. Love her and she will guard you. Look at, look at all that belongs to wisdom in that verse, that we are held safe by this flow of wisdom. Now in the Old Testament, of course, they had the, they had the wisdom that came through uh, the law. Under the new covenant, we have a new law, the law of love. Yes. Yes. Do you know that to walk in wisdom for the, for the new creature in Christ, the New Testament believer, to walk in wisdom is to walk in the love of God? Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. That's right. okay. That to step out of love, you just stepped out of wisdom because oh, yeah. love is the wisdom of God. Yes. Yes. Who we are in Christ is the wisdom of God. Yes. What he has made ours. What about this? The nine fruits of the spirit. Mm -hmm. Those are forces, divine forces that belong to you now. And they are of the flow of the wisdom of God. Yes. Amen. Amen. It's wisdom that you walk in love and joy and yes. peace and all these nine fruits of the spirit. That's why he put them in you. The wisdom put it in you. Yes. So, uh, and, and here with Proverbs chapter four, verse six, that the, the uh, Amplified translation says, forsake not wisdom. Amen. Amen. That Amen. means don't lay it aside. Yes. Don't Amen. neglect to do what wisdom would do. Well, yes. what's wisdom telling you to do? Well, what does who you are in Christ say to you? Yes. Amen. Right. Amen. What does walking in love say to you? Right. <laughs> That love flow. What's about the nine fruits of the spirit that are in you? They're to direct you. They're to enable you yes. to live this life uh, in the highest flow. Right. And it's not wisdom to not draw on them. Right. So don't forsake what, what the wisdom of God gave you. Right. Amen. Yes. Amen. In his wisdom, he has given us his way of thinking. Yes. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. Let's be a partaker of how he thinks. Verse seven of Proverbs four says this, the beginning of wisdom is get it. Yes. What's that mean? You say, well, I thought uh, all these things in Christ belong to me. Yes, but you got to get skill with them. Yes. It's yes. one thing to know that you have it, but it's an, many don't even know what they have. That's yes. right. But it's another thing, even though you know what you have to become skillful with what yes. you have yes. so you can become an ongoing partaker. Yes. yes of what wisdom made yours, Amen. of who you are in Christ. Yes. So the beginning of wisdom is get wisdom, skillful and godly wisdom. Amen. For skillful and godly wisdom is the principal thing. It's the foremost thing. Yes. Amen. The word is the wisdom of God. When you get the word in you, you're, you're moving with the foremost thing. You're yes. moving with the highest flow. You're moving with the chief 
thing. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. And Amen. with all you have gotten, get understanding. What's that mean? Understand what wisdom has made yours. Understand who you are in Christ. Amen. Understand how to draw on that and give place to that flow of who you are in Christ in your daily life. Amen. So it says, get understanding, discernment, comprehension, and interpretation. Amen. Verse eight says, prize wisdom highly. Since the wisdom of God is who we are in Christ for the new believer or the new, cre- the new creature in Christ, And it says, prize wisdom highly. That means we're going to prize who we are in Christ more than who we are in the flesh. The devil's always trying to point you back to your flesh because that's the only place of failure. That's where failure enters. Through the mind, through the flesh. But it can't enter through your spirit because you are, you're created in his image and there is no failure created in his image. Prize wisdom highly. Prize who he made you to be. And exalt her, exalt that. Yes. Yes. And she or that wisdom of who you are in Christ will exalt you and promote you. Amen. It'll promote you into healing. It'll yes. promote you into prosperity. Yes. Yes. It'll promote you into a marriage that's heaven on earth. Yes. It'll promote you into answers mm-hmm. for your life. Yes. Amen. And it says, and she, wisdom will, will bring you to honor yes. when you embrace her. What's it mean to embrace? If you're embracing something, you're holding tight to it. Yes. You're not letting it go. That's right. This this speaks of a consistency. Amen. To embrace something, to okay. embrace the wisdom of God talks about a consistent holding to mm-hmm. the wisdom of God in the face of all adversity, in the face of all opposition. Yes. Amen. 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 Now, in John chapter 8, turn with me if you would. John chapter 8. And let's see something that Jesus said in verse 32. John 8, verse 32, he made this statement, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. Amen. Well, how many of you know wis- the truth of God is the wisdom of God? Yes. Right. That's true. Amen. Amen. Um, wisdom will promote us into God's way of thinking, that we think in line with truth. So Jesus said, you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. Look at this, no truth and the truth will make you free. What truth will make you free? Only the truth you know. Uh Truth you don't know, you'll not walk in the freedom of that. You have to know it. So you shall know the truth and the degree of truth you walk in. You'll be free based on the degree you know. Yes. Amen. What's that mean? No more. Yeah. Always be hungry to know more. Uh-huh. Never be satisfied. What's that mean? A lifelong student. We are lifelong students yes. of the wisdom of God, yeah. of who we are in Christ, of the word of God, yeah. of what the spirit reveals to us. Yes. Amen. Yeah. So Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. We cannot believe for something that is beyond what we know. Right. We can, if we know up to this far, we can believe up to this far. Uh-huh. If we only know to this far, we can only believe to this far. Right. If we know this far, we can believe this far. Right. So your faith can't go further than your knowledge. Yes. Yes. That's what it means. And Jesus said, you'll know the truth and the truth will make you free. Yes. Now, as we said, you can't believe beyond actual knowledge. What's that talking about? The knowledge of the word. Find out God's way of thinking. Mm -hmm. You can't have faith for something you don't even know is available to you. You know, I was raised in a church, precious, precious people, loved God, but we didn't know. There was a lot we did not know. We never heard that Jesus was a healer. And because we didn't know that about him, I never saw anyone healed in our church. Never, uh, never, never was anyone offered. Let me pray for you to be healed. Mm-hmm. Never heard that. Yeah. Yeah. Why? We didn't know it. Right. Right. Um, the more, you know, the more you'll enjoy. Yes. The less, you know, the less you'll enjoy right. of what God's made yours. Yeah. We never heard that God was our provider. Now we had, let me say this, a general way of thinking of God can do anything. 
but because we didn't know the specifics of what anything meant, <laughs> we weren't believing for anything. <laughs> because if we are too general, that's a sign we many times don't know much. Faith has to be specific. Yes. You have to have specific knowledge Amen. for faith to work specifically. Right, that's true. Well, God can do anything, but even though we generally thought that, we weren't receiving anything of that right. because we didn't know. Yes. We did not know. Yeah. Don't, don't stay on purpose in the seat of the unknowledgeable. Amen. Move into the seat of the knowledge. Yes. Get knowledge yes. of what the word says. Why? You're getting the wisdom of God and that wisdom will promote you. It'll right. keep you. It'll defend you. That's right. Amen. Amen. But when we know something of what is ours, then we can partake of it. We can, we know it's available to us. Yeah. Now, Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. Jesus was bringing truth to the earth that men had never heard. Amen. That's right. right? right. Um, I want us to turn real quickly to Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. And Jesus brought a... A, an unveiling, an exposing of something of Satan's kingdom mm -hmm. and how he worked that men had never heard before. Amen. Now, think about it. Now, we won't take time to turn there, but John chapter 10, verse 10. Mm -hmm. How many times, even in the Old Testament, do we see men of the Old Testament attributing something destructive to God? Right. Mm -hmm. Men mm -hmm. would. Yeah. 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 God giveth and God taketh away. Right. Those kinds of things. Right. Yeah. Um, they would call God punishing them. Mm -hmm. Such words like that. Well, that's as far as was revealed. Right. But Jesus came and said, and it's recorded in John chapter 10, verse 10. He said, the thief comes right. to steal, kill, and destroy. See, not everyone, not everyone knew where did all the bad things of the earth come from. Right. Many attributed it to God right. because they had, they didn't have the same revelation of the devil. Jesus brought a revelation of the devil that they didn't have in the Old Testament. Why? Because Jesus also gave us the authority over him, yes. Amen. and they didn't have the same authority that the new covenant believer has. Amen. So Jesus was able to expose more because we would have an authority over him. Yes. Amen. Right. So Jesus in, in John 10, 10 exposes something of the devil. He said, Satan, the thief comes to steal, kill and destroy, but I've come that you might have life and that you might have life more abundantly. Yes. So anything that steals, kills, and destroys, the devil did it, right. period. Right. Right. Don't, even, don't even think God had anything to do with it right. because only anything good came from God, anything yes. with life in it, anything that brought the abundance of something good. Yes. Only God had, has something to do with that. Right. Uh, I mean, even in, for example, in our insurance policies, they'll call certain things acts of God. Tornadoes, fires, hurricanes, things right. like that. They'll call them acts of God. Why? Because people attribute anything right. that's, right. that's beyond their knowledge, right. beyond their control to God. Right. But Jesus made it real simple because people have gone through life thinking, why did God let that happen to me? Well, if it was bad, God didn't let it happen. That's, right. 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 Yeah. that's true. That was Satan bringing it. Uh -huh. yeah. That was Satan bringing it. That's right. right. Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Right. And many times God has taken in the, in the mind of man, the man has put on him the blame yeah. when he had nothing to do with it. Jesus came and exposed that. He right. revealed that. Yes. Yes. Right. Anything that steals, kills, and destroys is the devil. No, you've got to get that on the inside of you. Yes. Then there's something else here that I wanted us to look at in Matthew chapter 12, verse 43. Jesus also exposed something else about the enemy and how he works that men didn't know till Jesus heard it. Listen, men were hearing this. When they heard Jesus, they were hearing what no man had ever heard before. Amen. Matthew chapter 12, verse 43. Jesus is talking. He says, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man... That unclean spirit walketh through dark place, through dry places, seeking rest. 
and findeth none. Now, why does he, why does he seek rest? Um, the devil can only gain expression through something on this earth. If he can't gain expression, he's not at rest. So he's looking for someone to influence, some way to uh, influence someone to say something, do something, Uh because he's only at rest when he's stealing, killing, and destroying. So Jesus said, when the unclean spirit has gone out of a man, That unclean spirit walks through dry places seeking rest and he finds none. Why? Because in dry places, there's no men to give expression to him. Right. That's true. Amen. Verse 44. Then the unclean spirit says, I will return into my house. See, notice where, what he once inhabited, he considers his. Yes. Yeah, that's right. yeah. When you're born again, you're no longer his. That's yeah. right. I don't yes. care what that's had right. troubled your life, what had harassed your life, what had tormented your life. Once you belong to Christ, you no longer belong to anything of the kingdom yes. of darkness. Yes. That's right. That's right. Verse 44, then that unclean spirit will say, I will return into my house. What do we know then? Jesus is exposing something about how the devil works. When he is cast out, he always tries to return. Uh-huh. Amen. Right. Yeah. That's right. He doesn't try to return because you don't have faith. Uh-huh. He doesn't try to return because the word isn't working. Right. He tries to return because he can't find expression in that dry place and uh-huh. he's acquainted with where he used to be. Right. Yeah. He's familiar with where he used to be. Right. So right. he goes back and he tries to again work what he used to work yeah. before yeah. he before you belong to Christ. Right. Right. So he says, I will return. This is, what it, this is what the kingdom of darkness says. I will return into my home. So what am I saying to you? Don't ever be afraid just because something shows back up. Yeah. It's not because God's not working for you. It's not because the word's not working and your faith's not working. It's yeah. because that's how that kingdom operates. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Your faith is still working. Yes. Yes. The word's still working. Yes. Keep working the word. Yes. Amen. Amen. Then he saith, I will return into my, ho- my, my house from whence I came out. Well, see, it's not his house any longer. Right. When he was there, it was his house, but now he's been cast out. When you got born again, that, that anointing, that, that power of God that came in you runs things out. Yes. Amen. 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 I remember something I was going, I, I had gone through a, a season of a testing years ago. My goodness, about 20, well, well over 20 years ago now. And I had gotten on the other side of that thing. Mm -hmm. And there was just bombarding thoughts during that season of testing. And I had gotten on the other side of that. And sometime after that test had ended, I'm going down the road in my car and up from my spirit came these words. Didn't run through my mind. I hadn't thought of them, but they came up out of my spirit and I just spoke them out without even processing what I was saying. Mm -hmm. And I heard come up these words and I just spoke them out. No, God didn't speak them out. I spoke them out. But God, these words came floating up and I recognized them and spoke them out. And these are the words I said, just because you can still see the Egyptians doesn't mean you're back in Egypt. Now listen to that. Just because you can still see the Egyptians doesn't mean you're back in Egypt. Amen. What's that pertaining to? Well, think of when God delivered his people out of Egypt. Uh They were delivered, but even after they had left Egypt Mm -hmm. and they were at the Red Sea, getting ready to cross the Red Sea, as that water parted, that enemy army from Egypt came back. Mm -hmm. They were coming back after the people. Mm -hmm. There are several reasons why they could have come back. Number one, we want our workforce back. Or number two, we gave them all our silver and gold. Uh We want our wealth back. Um. But they could still, they saw the Egyptians coming. But the thing is, even though they saw them, they were free now. Yeah, that's right. They were no longer in the land of bondage. Right. They were no longer in the land of Egypt. Yeah. They were free, right. even though they saw the enemy trying to pursue them. Right. That's, right. that's what that's what the Spirit of God said to me. Just because you can still see the Egyptians 
doesn't mean you're back in Egypt. Just because symptoms try to show back up doesn't mean you're sick. Just because lack tries to show back up doesn't mean you're not prosperous. They're just trying to pursue you to see if they can find a place of return. That's right. The wisdom of God knows. I said the wisdom of God knows. I've been delivered yes. from that kingdom, That's not right. going back. That's right. And the wisdom of God is you answer it yes. with what you know. Yes. You answer it That's with right. I'm redeemed from you. Yes. Amen. Amen. That's right. Now, that enemy army would have loved to have stopped the Hebrews from crossing that Red Sea and would have loved to create a battle right there mm-hmm. at, the, at the bank. But what did God's people do? They kept moving forward. Whenever those enemies came, they didn't stop and get impressed. They didn't stop their progress. And God opened the way as Moses held across that rod, held out that rod. God opened that water up and they just kept going. What do you do when the enemy comes? Say, I know where I'm going and I know who I am and I'm not stopping for you. I'm keeping on going. I don't stop for financial problems. I don't stop for, I don't stop for physical symptoms. I don't stop. I keep going. I'm not going to stop here at the bank of my crossing and sit and fight something that I've already won over. Listen, Jesus defeated Satan. You're no match for him. You're, Jesus already defeated him. You're not called to fight him again. You're called to remind him of his defeat. Yes. 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 That's, that's, the, that's the good fight of faith. Yes. We're not to again fight the devil. You're no match for him. It took, it took the Godhead to deal with him. Yes. It took Jesus coming down yes. and dealing with him. Right. And he defeated Satan. Yes. You're no match for him. But what, what are you to do in the face of when he shows up and tries to offer again a, a battle? Uh-huh. You remind him, you're already defeated. I don't have to fight you. That's right. That's right. That's right. I don't have to win over you. I've, Jesus already won and handed me the victory yes. as though I won it. Yes. Amen. That's the wisdom of God. Yes. Don't forsake wisdom. Remember what Proverbs 4 verse 6, don't forsake, don't forsake wisdom. It'll keep you. It'll defend you. It'll guard you. It'll protect you. But if you're going to lay down wisdom instead of use the wisdom, you won't enjoy the benefits you sh- that belong to you. Amen. That's true. The wisdom of God is know who you are in Christ and put it in your mouth. Yes. And when opposition shows up, you remind the devil. Amen. Amen. Now, let's go back to Matthew. How about that? Matthew chapter 12, verse 44, Jesus was speaking here. He said, then that unclean spirit says, I will return into my house from whence I came out. Now, let me finish the other story I started. Remember, I'm going down the road in the car and up from my spirit come these words, just because you can still see the Egyptians doesn't mean you're back in Egypt. The Hebrews were not back in Egypt just because they saw the army pursuing them. I had come out of that season of testing. A couple of days later, after those words came to me, I'm sitting in the ministry office, seven o'clock on a Friday night. I'm doing work at the office. This was years ago. And an e- that same evil spirit that had tried to attach itself to me in that previous season came right back into the room. I, fe- I-, I sensed when he, I knew where he was at. By the word of knowledge, I knew where he was standing and I felt every bit of his evil presence with him. See, what, what do you say when you felt the evil presence? I felt fear. Yes. Right. I felt that sense of fear. Well, that's not my fear. That's his. That came in with him. That's not my fear. God's not given me the spirit of fear. I don't have any fear. You don't have any fear if you're born again. Any fear you feel is the devil's. Don't, don't take it as yours. It's not your fear. It's his. Satan and all of his beings are tormented beings. They are tormented with fear. And anytime they are present, you can sense what they're tormented with. It's not yours. But he tries to push off his onto you, right. trying to make you think it's yours just because you feel it. I don't That's care right. what you feel. That's right. That's right. You have to know something. Yes. That's what I'm feeling is yours. Amen. Right? Amen. 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 So I, I, I sensed that spirit of fear come into the room. And when he came in, listen, I felt it was an overwhelming feeling. I mean, to the natural, not to my faith. 
right. not to the word, not okay. to my spirit, but I'm talking about in the flesh. It was an overwhelming, a sense of overwhelming fear. Mm-hmm. Yes. But I remembered something. I didn't forsake wisdom. That's yes. right. What was the wisdom? God gave me my answer before that ever showed up when I was driving down the road in the car. Just because you can still see the Egyptians doesn't mean you're back in Egypt. Yes. God was telling me, just because you can still feel that fear come back in the room doesn't mean you're back in that test. Yes. You are not in that test. And that's exactly what I said. I said, I don't care what I feel. I'm not going back in that test. I'm not in that test. I've overcome that test. Jesus won that for me and I'm not going to believe what I feel. And you say, then what did you do? Did he immediately leave? No, he didn't immediately leave. You know what I did? I immediately turned my attention away from him. I turned my attention toward God. You say, how did you do that? I started worshiping. Thank God I'm free. Thank God. I didn't say it to try to get free. I remembered I didn't forsake the wisdom that I was already free. I didn't forsake that wisdom. I didn't lay that wisdom down and act like it wasn't true. And because I held to that wisdom, it protected me. It defended me. It guarded me and it kept me. And that thing in a few moments was gone. I couldn't just sit there inactive though. I had to grab hold of wisdom. I had to enforce what I knew of the word. Amen. 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 Jesus said here in Matthew 12, 44, then that evil spirit says, I'll return into my house from whence I came. When the devil returns, it matters what you know and it matters what you say. You can't, don't talk about what you feel. Talk the wisdom of God. Because the wisdom of the word will deliver you. The wisdom of the word will protect and defend and guard you. Amen. Amen. Well, we're learning. You don't want to miss next time. And uh, I tell you what, the word turns us into robust believers. Amen. Amen. (laughs) And uh, we want you to join us next time. And until then, remember this, Jesus is the healer. God bless you. To watch or listen to today's message and other messages by Nancy Dufresne, visit DufresneMinistries.org. In Nancy Dufresne's book, A Supernatural Prayer Life, you will learn how prayer moves the plan of God forward. As we take time to pray in the Spirit, clarity of His plan for our lives comes. Order this book now at DufresneMinistries.org. On this CD, Confessions of Healing, Nancy Dufresne begins by briefly teaching on how to speak God's Word to release the faith that's in your heart. Then she begins to lead in confessions for healing from the Scriptures, allowing time for the listener to repeat them after her. If you or someone you know is in need of healing, this CD will be a blessing to you. Order today at DufresneMinistries.org. If you have received a healing or have any other testimony to share with us as a result of this broadcast, we would love to hear about it. Please call us, write us, or contact us through our website. We trust you've enjoyed this message. Visit us at DeframeMinistries.org to learn of our upcoming meetings, share your testimony, submit a prayer request, or visit our online store. Thank you to the friends and partners of Dufresne Ministries for making this production possible.